right, welcome back to another one. I'll try and uh, grab a few shots, try and get another upload up for you. Appreciate you people following me. So yeah, the last one you, you've just viewed was the fenders, if you've been following me. And it's taken me two days, so one day for each mud flat. What a mission. Said no time at all. I chucked those on there just to stop the stones or any stuff going forward and bashing the tank and knocking all the mud out that I put in there. No, that's not a dent, that is a shadow off the lights. Alright, it's going to show you what I'm up to now. Um, this truck, it's got no tie down points on the rear. So, if it breaks down or I need to put it on the truck and take it somewhere, I realise you can put the chain up underneath and go around the bar and that, but um, it's just had a bit of time to fill in this morning. I found these brackets that I've had laying at the um, hacksaw here, I've cut them off, something that got holes drilled in them. So unfortunately one of those holes is a bit close to the edge. Sorry about the other light, it's the, I'll turn it off, it's better. It's the, um, a bit close to the edge there but we'll make it work. I'm just going to hole saw it, you'll see what I'm going to do in a minute. And those ones there, I've marked it, it's going to cut those off down there, I've already cut a taper on there. Just one side was, one wasn't, so when you put it on the truck, one was up, one was down. So, I'm just going to take you down and show you what I'm going to do. Right, so I've rigged it up in the, my little uh, drill here. Clamped it down on a bit of wood. I don't know if the saw is going to cut the stuff or not. Pretty experimental. Put a bit of cutting compound on the drill. If it works, we should get a pretty nice tidy hole, but if it doesn't, it's just going to be a big mess. I warn you from the beginning, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what speed to turn these things or anything like that. If one thing happens, we'll get a hole through the middle. About a 5mm hole. That should do. Goop on there, might help it. Tighten the belts on my drill. It's gonna work. It's really sharp that thing. Cool. Oh, I'll bring it back when I've drilled it. One hole. Cut really well. I shut you off because of the noise, obviously. Why have we been turning it too fast? I don't know. Um, right, I'll clamp it and get it out and do the next one. Right, brackets, uh, you can see I hold sawed them, went out, cleaned them all up, cut the ends off them, and I've, yeah, I'll show you once I'm finished. Um, just drilling the holes, so I've clamped it down here. I don't like the idea of my work going around and talking to me. So, Mark that. No, I haven't got a pilot drill through there. I, I can't change the drill without shifting the work. I don't have enough height in my unit at the moment, so we'll just make do with this. Drills it okay. Pretty lucky to have this sort of gear for doing these projects. I watch Mike the truck nut and that and I look at them and then they, they work with what they've got. Yeah, sort of realise it's pretty hard for them. Don't have a don't have a big drill or lathe or anything. And I suppose that's why I like watching them and make do with what they've got. It's amazing what they can get done. I love the 
English clamping set. Very useful tool. Right. Yeah, file those up. I've um, already drilled the other one. Usual story, I'm doing something and think, I haven't turned the camera off. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to bore you with the same thing over and over. We'll go and clean these up and um, might do a test fit. We got these mocked up. Got them sitting on there. I found some longer bolts. It was a bit of an issue. The other ones um, want to run hardened washers either side. Um, yeah, they weren't long enough. So I found some more bolts. I think they're reasonable grade. Should be right. So we'll get those to the other side. I haven't decided what colour I'm going to paint them yet. I was just wondering whether I do them a different colour. Mark them as a tie down point or just paint them the same maybe. Alright, the next thing I've moved on to is... Right, the front of the truck's just got a um, pin in the cast. Which, bit of a problem. Can't get at the top of it with this bumper and that. But you, you can push the pin up. So, not the end of the world. You get up in there. So, um, if for some reason we ever go on our ferry between the North and South Island, got to have tie down points. I don't really know what all the requirements are. I'm not even going to search it. I'm not really worried about it. May never ever go that far. But obviously, yeah, um, won't be hooking into here because one, you'll hit the bumper and the hooks won't go in there. So, I'm going to make something up to go in there. Oh. Take you for a walk and I'll show you what I think I'm going to do. Everywhere we go, if we see something laying somewhere, I think these were in a scrap bin when we bought one of our John Deere tractors. Obviously we've taken off something. Um, so yeah, this I've already cut something off here. I have no idea what I've used off that. This is a bit thicker than the rear ones. Would have been better to make a rear one out of this, but I didn't want to try and um, cut all this out. Bit of a drama. So I got this here, and I was thinking about making a double one. Comes out either way, um, so you can, if you wanted to tie down and pull either way on it. But all that's too complicated. So I did a bit of a template of the hole up there in the truck. So I've just sat that on there. And without even measuring that hole there is too big. But I was thinking about all that a bit more. I will try and explain. But I'm going to make a bush to go in there. And I'll make it the height of the tongue on the truck. So that'll, and then bore it for the size of the pin. And that'll stop this rocking around in there I'll make it quite a neat fit on the pin so that'll fix that problem of it doing this and then I need to stop it swiveling so I'll make something once I mock that up and sit it in there to go across and hit on the edge so it doesn't pull either way and damage the bumper just need something which will jam up against the casting in there I'll come up with that idea afterwards make the rule make it up as I go so this here, if, I, if that was made like that, pin goes in, this will be sticking out the front of the truck. I, um, I could possibly just cut this off around here, yep, get rid of that, that hole there. But that is, yeah, pretty good to put hooks in. Doesn't really matter. I mean, they pulled down on that, I don't think it would, um, would bend it. Doesn't matter if it did. It would be pretty, pretty strong. So, I'll, as usual, bring you back when I've done a bit more, and I'll probably revise the plan a couple of times. Alright, my last clip, I showed the bush, oh sorry, the plate, so I cut the plate out, and um, we're going to make the bush to go in it. I'll take you down and show you, my young fella, um, Sunday morning here, wanted something to do, so we've got to make the lathe. So 
we found a bit of steel the right diameter and we're just turning the end down a little bit long instead of cutting it off to practice in the lathe how to use it. And we'll turn it down a bit and then we'll just um, face it off, get rid of the last piece. So we're going to bore it to make the pin size to go through it to the pin on the front of the truck. Keep showing you a few shots as we make it. Right, Alex is putting the centre drill in so we can start and drill and bore this out to um, the size we require for the pin to go through. Right, that'll be enough. On the back. Yep, that'll do. Turn it off. Alright, you're going to let the brake go and slide it back. And we'll change over to the drill we can put through. Yep. Take that one out, give it a wipe. Another way. Put that over on the end there with the rest of them. I want that drill there, I've just sharpened it. And we'll see if that one's going to cut. Put it in, put it in to the stops. Do it up. So if you wind that back any further, you'll end up pushing the taper out. That's how you get that out of there. So when, when that goes back, and you can feel it stop, that there, yeah. don't go anymore. If you pop that out. Right, slide that forward without bashing the tool into the work. No, it's perfectly bashed into it. Yeah, it'll break the drill bit. Push that on. Right, we'll put some cutting kind of compound on the drill and we'll see if we can get it started. I don't know what this bit of steel is either. It's a bit of chrome shaft on the outside. Oh. Yep. so far then you have to wind it back, put some more fluid on it and the drill's going to get blocked up as well. Those turns won't keep coming out. back once we've uh, got through and we start the next drill. Alright, we've stepped up in drill size. Seems to be working right for us. Cut that through there. I've got a talking matrix but we need a 32 mil hole through there. Material, just about to tell you, 32, about an inch and a quarter roughly, somewhere around there. Okay. So I've got the option, um, yeah, the tape is quite damaged on this, but yeah, that drill there, yeah, I know it's broken, it's an old drill. We're only going to use the outside edge, so I do getting it out first. And, um, it's right on size and if I have to, I'll, um, I've got a boring bar here, internal, a couple of those here, and just chuck that through, clean the hole out. We'll just make it and take it out and see if it fits over the pin.
Right, we've stepped up to our final drill size. We'll drill this through and we'll do a measure and take it out and try it in the pin. I just have to do a skim in there with a eternal tool. I sharpened my big drill, big damage, but I didn't sharpen it straight. I had a cutting on one side. I told you I'm not a machinist. Just a farmer. At least it's cutting like that. It's a little bit cutting on the side. sort out the studio lighting here it's not too good in the Hollywood studios here right we've got the bush we made and I've centralized it and I tacked it in there we just done a little bit of grinding on my plate here to make it fit in there but yeah sorry about the lighting Can't do much about it I lost my assistant he's had enough he's gone inside um, he helped me put the pin in and we got all that I, I made it with tolerance um, yeah, too tight, you never get it in. We know all about that. Um, I got, my next thing is I need to stop it going like this. Because she's going to smash the bumper up. So I'm going to come up with a way of making something to go down in the sides here. To try and hit on the taper and the cast here of the pulling hitch area. I'm just not too sure what I'm going to do there. I might uh, retire for the day and I'll have a dream, come up with an answer. Can't stop the pin from rotating. No way of doing that. Not putting a bolt through it so you don't only shear it off. And then we never get the pin out. So, yeah, I can't jam it in the back there. There's a hole in the casting in the very back of the tongue here. So, yeah, I can't stop doing that. And I didn't want it just to grab on the back corners of this I made because it wouldn't be enough. It would only bend it and squash it and, and eventually give it. It's going to be something strong along the sides here. But whatever I make has to be able to fit out through the bumper here. The bumper's right flush with all that there. So it's sort of got to work on the back half more than anything else. And that'll... Um, fit in and out won't take too much thought about putting a bit of steel across the front here and bending it so it just touches there back here somewhere welding a piece either side of this bush something pretty rough right, I have a dream and I'll come back to you all right, we have prototype number, I don't know, I'll think of a number in a minute. So, uh, in my last clip I said I was going to go and have a dream and figure out what I was going to do. Well, it was a quick dream. I walked past the scrap bin, heading over to wash my hands, and I looked in there, and I saw the offcuts that I'd cut off from around here. And I looked at them, and I thought, hmm, yep, that doesn't look too far from it. So, I sat it all up in front of the truck with a pin through it, and I sat, sat them in there and just a little bit of grinding and I clamped them in position and brought them out and just tacked them and uh, that's what I've ended up with that's the bottom side uh, yep bottom side, top side I'm going to have to mark it, it may only go one way so um, yeah I'll get my number punches and I'll punch numbers on it hereby certified by me nobody's going to know I haven't actually tried it since I've welded it up, it's still quite hot. So, um, yeah, we're ready. Ready for what? I don't know. It's a Peterbilt, we'll never have to tow it. I mean, totally reliable truck. Not going to break down. I might have a mental breakdown, but the truck will be fine. And as you've seen, got the rear ones. No painting, obviously, yet, but I'm just showing you what I've done. And, um, Bring you around to look at me. With that, I think I'll uh, I will I'll wrap this up. I know it won't be very long, but yeah, hang in there, people. I'm getting towards the end of this. 
few parts to arrive and we'll get the engine fired up and um, yeah, I'll chase the window people and get those in and it'll be drivable. Even that it's nearly mid-winter here and it's wet and it's horrible. So I will give you a little snippet of something that I've got coming this week. And I don't know if I'll film them, put them up or not. I uh, went to our local sign shop and there's dimensions and metric numbers, sorry. But, yep, I'm going to uh, get a sign made at those dimensions. And it's going up on the back of the cab there on that top panel. Cab's still to forward at the moment, but yeah, I'm going to put that across there. They were really awesome to deal with where I went. And uh, more than happy about the price too. They're you know, really, yeah, really good. I may film it put going on. I'll just ask the man or lady, whoever does it. They may not uh, appreciate that. And I grabbed some parts this week on the air fitting for my leak underneath. Replace that. And uh, light's not very good, sorry. But yeah, grabbed a couple of these um, T-handles, whatever you want to call them. So I put some brand new ones on. I don't want to lose that battery box lid. Pretty hard to make another one. I got so I got one spare. I'll just keep that for something else. The same as my other truck, I think. Those mounted up. Can't hardly see that one in there. So uh, oh, and put the caps on. Had to buy the reflectors. Can't get plain caps anymore, apparently. So I was told, but I know somebody's probably got a box of them sitting somewhere. It's the plain white ones. Apparently that's where you can get. I asked for white caps to go in there, but I got black ones. I didn't say anything. I'm just... That'll be right. It's black bolts on there. So everything's very expensive now. Just those couple of caps and then the air fittings and the latches. It doesn't take long to burn up a couple of hundred dollars. It's frightening stuff. Don't ever fix a truck. So I'll try and. I'll try and end this on a positive note. Um, Ian, I appreciate you watching. I know there's a uh, few people out there following me and they don't subscribe. Hit that like button anyway, that helps. It'll get it pushed out there further into the YouTube world. But as I've talked about, it's unlimited what's out there on YouTube. Eh? You just start scrolling and it's like, wow. It's just massive. But uh, yeah, with that, I'll end the video here. And again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.